Yeah, whenever, whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Of the 65 emails, I printed out of four or five of those that I got. That's good, yeah, just, just read what they wrote. You Jews have been tolerated long enough, and now the fire rises. Why don't you save all of us a lot of grief and go back to Israel? We've been observing you oven dodgers for a long time now, and we know how you operate. We are now fighting fire with fire. And here comes a couple of goodies. Gas the fucking kikes. Race war. Now you kid fucking pizza gate inciting kike. I will kill you and I will gas your wife. Last December, our community um, was hit with anti-Semitic harassment, cyber terrorist attacks, and threats of an armed Nazi march. It started mid-December and lasted um, for six weeks. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! <laughs> When um, Richard Sp Spencer stood up at a conference in Washington, D.C. and put his hand in the air and hailed America, our little town of Whitefish grew really scared because um, Richard and his parents have, um, have ties, family connections to this area and, and um, a home here and uh, claim it as their own. They own a commercial building downtown. Sherry Spencer contacted Tanya said she was embarrassed by her son. She wants to sell the building. And Sherry said, Tanya, what do I do? And I told her, Sherry, if this were my son, I would probably sell the building and I would donate some money to a human rights cause. And I would make a public statement saying, I don't believe in the ideologies of my son. And then, the eruption. I was just Googling and watching how news was flowing in that week. And Wednesday, while I was sitting at my computer um, and looking around, I found this 4chan discussion board. It blows up as to how Tanya is extorting uh, Sherry and Come Andrew Anglin. Andrew Anglin put out a, a call for an attack, an article on his neo-Nazi website, The Daily Stormer. Anglin called for an attack on Tanya, on myself as the rabbi in the community, and on Ina Alpert, who is the founder, founding member of Love Lives Here, our local human rights organization, and also married to another rabbi who had served the congregation and the community previously. And so I posted these people's information and the information about these organizations and their phone numbers and their emails and their Twitter accounts and said, you know, why don't you tell these people if you want, if you have opinions about this, why don't you tell these people what you think of what they're doing? Type Daily Stormer into Google News and look at these articles about me and my website and they are all saying that I'm the one that it's me that I'm threatening and harassing people that I'm the bad guy we started receiving hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of phone calls text messages emails photoshopped images of us um, and my 12 year old son um, telling us that we should have died in the Holocaust with the rest of our people. Now if you Google my name, it's my face with swastikas and Jewish symbol or Nazi symbols and my son's face with swastikas and Jewish symbols and it's really devastating. The usual question 
to the two of us is, were we scared? And the answer is absolutely not. Pissed. And cautious. And cautious. But Alan is a, you know, he was a freedom rider. He faced much more serious and scary situations in his life. And I have been determined since I was a kid, I grew up just after World War II and, and all the Holocaust stories and everybody afraid and feeling like a victim. And I very early in life decided I would not be a victim for any of these people. So these um, cards would come in every day, um, packages of them. Um, and for Hanukkah, we would um, sit, our family and the Gersh family spent almost every night of Hanukkah together, and we would um, light the candles and sing the prayers, and then um, sit and open and read cards together. One of the most um, beautiful and powerful cards was a card that came from someone in Montana, and it just said, you belong here. And we certainly questioned whether we belonged in the, because of this experience. And everything, all the messages from, the, from our town went against you know, that fear and internal questioning. Um, we didn't need to leave. We were in the right place, in the right community. We absolutely adore living in Whitefish. Um, I think that it is one of the finest and best decisions that I've made in my lifetime. And I've used the term before, this whole area is what the Garden of Eden was supposed to be. <laughs>